Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Barnes Takeout, your weekly serving of art from the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. I'm Bill Perthes, the Bernard C. Watson Director of Adult Education, and today we're going up to the second floor to Gallery 17, which is a small corner gallery devoted largely to works on paper. And here we're looking at the, the north wall. It's actually anchored by a late painting by Henri Matisse. You see it here. And this wonderful tin glaze, I'll go in this tin glazed dish above it. One of the examples of the unique mixture of objects that Dr. Barnes used to create the ensembles that are really a signature of the Barnes Foundation. Um, around that, uh, those works, uh, you'll see uh, watercolors. Uh, I'll zoom in a little more. Um, two works by Yul Pascan. But these works here, three on this side, three on this side, are watercolors by the American artist Charles Demuth. He's an artist I've discussed in a previous takeouts. Um, now we're sort of stepping back a little bit and looking at a yet another variation of, of Demuth's work. And uh, the work I want us to focus on is down here, the lower left-hand corner. And here we see it in its full, uh, full view. Uh, it's called Jugglers with Indian Clubs, and it's from uh, 1917. It's a, it's a watercolor on what's called wove paper. So just really just watercolor paper, essentially. Uh, just as a, a recap, in case you hadn't seen uh, the earlier uh, Demuth talks that I gave. Demuth was born in Lancaster, so just, just outside of Philadelphia in 1883. He went to the Drexel Institute of Art, Science, and Industry here in Philadelphia, as well as the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. He traveled a fair amount, and in uh, 1912, he lived for uh, a little more than a year and a half in Paris. Um, Paris at, in 1912 was really the hotbed of modernism, and is, was that and he, Demuth had traveled there before, but this was an extended stay, and it was while he was there that he, among other things, took classes at uh, what was called the Academy uh, Moderne, uh, an arts academy for a modern art academy, um, and it was there uh, that also that uh, he had the opportunity to to practice his uh, his drawing skills, in particular because uh, at this academy, they did quick three minute poses with models, um, which gave uh, students the opportunity uh, to really improve their quick sketch techniques. Uh, and this was a, a method called croquis, called croquis, and it was one a practice that was made uh, famous by the sculptor uh, Auguste Rodin. Uh, and many of Demuth's early works really take on a quality that resonates with Rodin's, uh, Rodin's drawings. When uh, Demuth uh, returned from, from Paris, uh, he settled in Philadelphia and then eventually in New York, but, but Lancaster always remained a, um, a home base for him. Uh, indeed, he, he readily returned and stayed for extended periods of time. Uh, in, in Lancaster. And it was perhaps there uh, at the Colonial Theater in Lancaster that Demuth would have seen the subject of uh, this watercolor. Uh, these jugglers would likely have been part of a, a vaudeville, a traveling vaudeville troupe. Um, in the 19th century and 20th century, vaudeville was perhaps the most popular form of entertainment. Uh, and what is what was vaudeville? Um, it has origins going all the way back, probably to the 16th century, uh, in the tradition of the Commedia dell'arte, um, traveling performing groups in Europe, in uh, Italy, and very well known in France. In fact, in the 18th century, these uh, traveling troops were popular subjects for artists such as Boucher and Lancret all the way through to the 19th and early 20th century where Cezanne and Picasso also painted uh, subjects drawn from uh, the Commedia dell'arte tradition. But in, in the United States, American vaudeville was something quite different. 
Um, it was uh, usually a series of unrelated uh, performances, um, little sort of sketches. And the variety of uh, material that was presented in, uh, in these performances was, was really quite remarkable. It could be every, anything from um, a scene from a Shakespeare play to, uh, to acrobats, uh, comedians, uh, singers, dancers, or as we see here, uh, jugglers. And it was in vaudeville in the late 19th, uh, early 20th century that many very well-known uh, stars got their start. So people such as uh, Jack Benny, W.C. Fields, Bob Hope, Abbott and Costello, the Three Stooges, um, as well as um, Will Rogers all uh, began their careers in, in vaudeville. So it was a real hotbed for, um, for performers. Um, so, and so what would have attracted uh, Demuth to painting these subjects? And I'll say that uh, in the collection, we have many examples of uh, Demuth uh, painting from vaudeville as well as circus performers. Well, one reason prob probably would have been that these performances were uh, were fairly inexpensive, so they were easily accessible. Um, another remarkable thing about vaudeville is that it attracted not only was it widely popular, but it also attracted audiences really that that uh, crossed all sorts of boundaries in, in terms of socioeconomic as well as as racial. Um, and uh, so and it and this was nationwide. These traveling troops really went everywhere. Um, bringing these these uh, these acts uh, across the across the country, um, so the accessibility would certainly have been something that attracted Demuth, but also I suspect because of the the subjects that he chose, it was also the the dynamic and um, the active quality, um, the animated quality of these of these subjects that attracted him as well. So taking that skill of being able to quickly draw something as he practiced in those croquis classes uh, in the Academy Modern, and now going to these vaudeville and circus perform performances and seeing these acts in motion and having the skill to be able to capture that sense of animation uh, quite deftly. Um, and so I want to go back and show you this picture because it's a it's a fairly small picture and uh, you'll see in this ensemble that uh, it's amongst uh, many other small and even smaller objects. So it's a picture that could easily be be overlooked, um, but it is well worth uh, spending some some time looking at. Some of the things that I appreciate about about this picture, not just this picture, but others, um, is Demuth's technique and his skill at using watercolors. Uh, this is a can be a challenging medium, particularly to get a sense of, uh, of the quality that he's able to to achieve. For one thing, the, the color has a, a light uh, luminosity to it. And yet, despite that, there's also remarkable variety in uh, both texture as well as um, the opaque to transparent uh, uh, quality that Demuth is able to achieve. So, for instance, if we look at the we look at the jacket of the man on the right, uh, notice how what variety there is in the in the quality of the color. These uh, lighter areas, uh, perhaps this is an uh, an area where Demuth might have put the color down and then gone back over it with a cloth to sort of dab it a little bit, taking some of that that color off and giving this, this wonderful variety. Or this uh, deeper spot here or on the sleeve is an area where he might have gone back over uh, the, the watercolor with some more color to give it a bit more of a sense of opaqueness. If we look at an area like this side, these striations are were perhaps created uh, by him going over uh, the color with just a, a wet brush, just with some water on it to loosen it a little bit and to add, again, uh, 
varying textures. And so what the effect of that is that rather than flat areas of color, we have all of this variety. It adds a, a sense of decorativeness as well. And as I said, also a sense of, of texture. Another thing that I th really find remarkable about uh, Dina's technique is his quality of line. It has a fluid uh, curvilinear quality to it, um, a delicacy to it. Uh, and um, very often, again, this his remarkable skill, if we look at the, the woman, his ability to both adhere to and then sometimes um, move away from the the edges, the boundaries that the that that line creates. So being able to keep the color, the watercolor within boundaries and then using again his technique to have it sort of wash out, fade away. Um, and again, in quality of line, giving us detail, but not an abundance of detail. So little touches like the slipper shoes of the man, the very delicate way in which he articulates that, or the collar and tie on the man, just these little these little details that just enliven, uh, enliven the picture. And then finally, in terms of technique is um, his ability to use open paper, that is, paper that doesn't have any any color on it. So the white area that we see in the man's trouser or the woman's dress, that's blank blank paper, um, but it functions as color. And this is a, a technique that he absolutely would have seen and admired in the watercolors of Paul Cezanne. And Cezanne learning how effective uh, open support canvas or paper could be in a composition that's something he would have learned working with the with the impressionists it, certainly it's a technique that he used both in his watercolors as well as in his his oil paintings and now let's talk about how demuth composes this picture it's i find it just as just absolutely captivating. So he pushes the, the figures to each extreme, to the left and to the right, and then populates the center of the picture, the sort of space between them with all of these objects. So we have the Indian clubs themselves with their, um, with their diamond colored pattern. Uh, these, those clubs as they tumble yet are suspended mid air between the two figures. And then behind them, in what little bit of picture space there is, because there isn't a lot, um, but behind them, uh, behind the figures, is this accumulation of other objects, other props perhaps for this juggling pair or for other uh, other acts in uh, in the vaudeville troupe. So the top hats, uh, the umbrella, and the cane. Uh, this is a, a bouquet of of flowers. This uh, this is a candlestick. Uh, boxes, perhaps again for for juggling, and this floor lamp. So it it both it both the inclusion of these objects both creates um, a bit more context uh, with within the within the picture. But because they populate the center, it gives us these points of interests to look at, um, you know, and it it gives a, a depth certainly to the to the subject. But what I th think is so remarkable about this is the fact is the way that Demuth draws our eye through this picture. And what I mean by that is by putting the figures on either extreme and then populating the center with these objects, as well as this, this shape, this sort of mandorla shape, this sort of uh, oval type shape that has this strong luminosity to it and that sets the objects uh, in the background apart. What that does is it it encourages our eye to move across to see and pick up these little objects or the objects in the back from figure to figure, so that our eye moves side to side in a cart in a kind of arcing mo movement, just in the same way that we're if we were audience members in the in the vaudeville theater watching this performance, that our eye would be carried back and forth by those those thrown and tumbling uh, Indian clubs. So he's he's so skillfully able to convey the experience of what it would be like to see these performers in person in the static medium of uh, of a watercolor. Um, so giving us the the sensation of that active movement back side to side 
um, back and forth between the two jugglers, uh, even in this small, uh, yet such rich, uh, such rich uh, watercolor. And as I said, this is one of of many uh, in the in the Barnes collection. And as I said, they're, they tend to be small. So I encourage you uh, the next time you visit um, to keep your eye out for them because they're, they're really just so so wonderful and so rewarding. Um, and as I said, easy easy to overlook. So keep your eye out for other this work in Gallery 17 on the North Wall, as well as other works by Charles Demuth in the Barnes Collection. So until next time, thank you very much. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.